This is ThinkTech Hawaii. Community matters here. Well, aloha, and how you doing? Great on the techs are here. Welcome to another exciting and thrilling episode of You Watch Your Duck. Grab yourself a chair, pull up a libation, and join us for um, a very interesting show this evening. I got Andrew, the security guy here. What's up, everybody? Aloha. I never know when you're here. I never knew when you're not here. Last week either. And at the point, I don't care anymore. <laughs> so, yeah, so, anyway, welcome home. Wow. For what, what four days? Yeah. That's, that's whatever. Anyway, yeah, we have an interesting guest there. We have um, uh, Chris Peterson. He's the president of Vector Firm. And uh, we're going to talk about the new paradigm of selling. Yeah. Or buying. Or buying. Or yeah. not buying, if, yeah, that is, if that is that's the right. case. So it's great to have you here on the show. It's awesome to, Thanks, um, we'll talk about selling and, um, in my case, the lack thereof. So um, our new background, we got our new little, uh, our little little spot on the beach here. So it's excellent. So anyway, but I got, as we do uh, every show, I do my little um, cryptocurrency update. Yeah, what are we I've been asked to do. Where's so, the gold coin? Where's the, yeah, where's Bitcoin gold? gold. Yeah, what's happening on that side? So um, there was a fork in the Bitcoin, in uh, another Bitcoin, fork. another fork. What the fork is going on with yeah. all this stuff? Anyway, there's another uh, fork that was happening on the 24th where Bitcoin, uh, a fork was happening. It was going to be called, it's going to be called, or is called, Bitcoin Gold. Okay. And, and the purpose of this fork was the fact that, when we've talked about how the mining is being taken over by, you know, the big powerful um, conglomerates, i.e. China is the largest Bitcoin miner in the world. Okay. Their electric bill is $36,000 a day nice. just mining Bitcoin. So, and Satoshi, when he created um, Bitcoin, it was supposed to be more decentralized and not, you know, right. not have the big players in there. So there was a desire on another group to turn around and create this fork in the road called Bitcoin Gold, which would then enable more miners, not the big guys out there, to be in that mining space. Okay. So 24th of, of this month, that split uh, happened, yeah, and yeah, they right got up. and they got hit with a denial of service attack. Ouch! A big one, ten thousand hits a minute. I wonder who set that. And up. so, <laughs> who knows? All the existing so, miners. So you start looking at it. Right? Right? So they got it. So um, Bitcoin Gold website was essentially down, um, and uh, I don't know how successful I would call that particular fork. I mean, the coin was created, okay. um, and it's there. It's trading at about one hundred sixty-one dollars. Um, right now, per coin. Well, didn't it start at zero? Uh, it started at zero, but um, so. there was, you know, right now the way it works is, though, if if you have Bitcoin, because that fork happened. So if you had ten Bitcoin, mm -hmm. you will get ten Bitcoin gold. Okay. So regardless, you just picked up sixteen hundred bucks. Yeah. Nice. So whatever, whatever way you look at it, sixteen hundred dollars. I had point oh five Bitcoin, so I got point oh five gold coin. Yes. Awesome. So you got point oh five. Gold coin, so but now you can find the exchanges that, where you can get it and move it around, and that's all going to take some time to iron itself out. So it's, it's interesting to see how this thing has unfolded. You know, Bitcoin has been unbelievable this past week. It was over six thousand one hundred dollars um, near the end of last week, and it's now fifty six hundred dollars. So again, not for the fate of heart. We've told people this over and over again. But that's the latest happening in the Bitcoin and cryptocurrency wow. world. Right on. Thanks. So right. pretty, there. pretty awesome. Okay, so let's talk to our guest. Okay, Chris, so um, tell us a bit about, your, about yourself. Where are you from? Where'd you go to school? Great. It's yeah, so a local style. We want to know all that kind of stuff first. I actually live in Orlando, Florida. Oh. And uh, I went to school at the University of Florida. The reason I'm here this week is I spoke at an event over in Kona. Uh, it was a, an electronic security event where hmm. Andrew and Christine were. And Andrew's company is a client of mine, so I thought, hey, if, if I'm in Kona, let's do something in, in at your office oh. instead of bringing me all the way from Florida one day. Right, so that's so. why I'm here. And, and Andrew said, "Hey, you're going to be on Wednesday. Let's go uh, film a show." So what is it? Because when Hibachi talks, the world listens. <laughs> the world listens. That's right. When Hibachi talks, the world listens. Nice. So, so what does your company do? So what we do is uh, we help electronic and cybersecurity companies with their sales and marketing strategies. Okay. So we're a consulting and training business that has really two niches. We've got a horizontal niche where it's just sales and marketing. Right. And we've got a vertical niche where it's just electronic cybersecurity companies. Okay. So it's a nice little square there. So, but the, um, that's not been normal for the security businesses. I mean, mostly you, before you came along, the guys that were selling it out of the back of their van. I mean, <laughs> well, I, I would say this. I would I still do. I would say <laughs> not this. Not these guys. Not okay. guys. Chris, Chris's particular appeal is he knows this vertical very, very well. So for specifically, you know, security industry companies mm -hmm. and the challenges that their salespeople face, the, the growth 
course for them. There's a lot of different markets that we work in, DOD, MuniGov, all the different commercial markets. So right. he's run into so many over the years. There's not, not many things he sees. He's kind of like, oh, man, I got 50 ways to get out of that hole. And he just has all these really great ideas. So, so I'm going to put play the naive Howley boy here and go like, so, so, but why can't I just go to Costco and buy the stuff? Why do I need some stuff? Buy what stuff? <laughs> Cameras. Yeah, yeah, Bitcoin? I, I can Bitcoin. <laughs> uh, well, you, if they let me put my ATM machine in there within the That's next few months, you go. Then will. they're not going to let me. Um, <laughs> but that being said, so, but, you know, what's happened in the industry that you're able to go into this in industry, teach people how to sell, when there's all kinds of stuff out there that you can mm. see every day. Yeah. Well, that, Good that's, question. And, and that's, that's one of the directions that the industry is heading. Like any other industry, it gets okay. commoditized. And then something five years ago that only 10 people in the world could do, today your spouse can do it. Right. right. And go to Costco. And DIY. Right. Right. DIY. Right. right. Yeah. And, and, and so that's one of the challenges that security professionals face today. So the folks that I work with are, are, are really high on the technology period. So, so the, folk, the things that Andrew's company does, you can't go to Costco and buy. So, right. so the folks that I help, they don't run into that challenge too often. In fact, the way we overcome, I've got a session on, on, on how to sell against the DIY uh, Okay, customer. the do-it-yourselfers. The do-it-yourselfers. And, right. and, and one of the main strategies is to identify who is a do-it-yourselfer yeah. and avoid them. And run. Right. Yeah. No, Run away. Right. Yeah, legal. I mean, heck, go ahead. And I, I wish them all the best. Like, go ahead. It's just not our, not well, you know, our market. Well, as we know, all those systems are wide open to all kinds of uh, hacks. And, yeah, but and they maybe do what they need to do. There's no telling what else it does. Yeah, yes. <laughs> well, that's it. Sure. They do what they, sure. they, they do what, what what needs to be done. And and uh, most of my clients are, are working in a world where a lot more needs to be done. So so how long have you been in the sales kind of in the business and in the industry of doing this? This, yeah, this is a niche market with yeah. what you're in. It's niche, and so I've been in sales since I got out of school. I, I actually have a mechanical engineering degree okay. from UF, but I decided to uh, go into sales because it just, well, quite candidly, because my girlfriend's father was a salesperson okay. in, in college. Okay. And here I was doing my thermal labs in, in, in my senior year of school, <laughs> and then I, I, I'd, I'd go visit them a couple hours away, and I'd see what he did. He, he managed a, a real estate office, okay, and he owned a real estate office, and I saw what you know, he did and his team did, and it was, it, was, it, was, it was a big competition to make a lot of money, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I thought, okay, what do I want? Do I want to continue down this engineering route, and this was you know, mid-90s, technology, early 90s. Technology was starting to really take off, and I thought... No, I want to get into this world of selling mm -hmm. and sell technology. Mm -hmm. So that's how I got into sales. Now, in security, I jumped over shortly after 9-11 uh, in the security Which industry. really blew the thing, no pun intended, but you know, yeah. blew it up. Well, a lot of folks uh, thought they were going to jump into the industry and become rich in a year and get out. Yeah. And, and, and I have to admit, I didn't think that, that was going to happen to me, but I also saw a pretty, I had an opportunity and I saw a really you know, growing industry. I started this business in 2010. Here's, here's, I was VP of sales for a manufacturer. Okay. Um, and manufacturers sell to companies like ISD. Right, right. And installs and services um, those, th that equipment. The so software. you get like a Dell. So for so our viewers, like a, a Dell, even though it's not in the security, they sell, they're the manufacturer of a product. Right. No, and, actually, a Dell is a British singer. But yeah, oh, oh, <laughs> a Dell. A Dell. <laughs> nice a Dell. Good one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about so that. So like Dell or HP or whatever who manufacture product, but then they also have those that sell them for them That's right. and service them. Yeah, right. Same in the security side. Same in the security side. And what we were doing, our, our big mission in, let's say, 04, 05, 06, was running around and building a channel of ISTs. Okay. And when we were doing that, I was in, in, in charge of a sales team doing that. What we noticed, or what I noticed, was most of these organizations did not have a strong sales strategy. They didn't, it, most of their salespeople were maybe former techs, most right. of these organizations had an owner that managed the team, which he or she didn't have the time to manage the team. So there was a lot of gaps in how to sell and how to market their services. Right. It didn't matter if I was in Honolulu or I was in Mumbai. Uh, and I visited integrators in Honolulu and in Mumbai. Yeah, Mumbai. And, and everywhere in between, they all had a similar issue. So I got this idea for this business. That was one dynamic was there was a need. The other dynamic was sometime around 2005, 2006, Right when the recession hits in, in 07, uh, a, a buying change happened. 
Right. B2B buyers stopped the traditional sales process and they said, okay, we, we used to have a department of 36 people. Now, because of the recession, we have a department of seven people. We've got to utilize technology and utilize the web and, and other services mm. to, to be more efficient. So I don't have time to see that salesperson. Right. I can check online to get a price. Yeah, they so, all became uh, instant, yeah, instant, yeah, so, instant knowledge, like this. they knew it all. They knew or it all. They knew what they found. Well, Let's put it that way. Right. Is that all of it? I doubt it. But they had enough, they had enough to be dangerous. And really then, and, good and, point. And, I mean, I am in a situation now where I'm doing some, some work for a client, and this particular product and service that I, I think will really fit the client's need, there's no re local representation here on the okay. island. Right. So now, so now I'm in this dilemma of do I become that local right. you know, arm, which... You know, that, in my spare time. So now, you know, it's, it's like, so now I got to maybe I go look for another product. Yeah. But I know this product is going to fit extremely well in their particular right. fit. But you need to support the local. Support. I need the local support. It's just not, and I can't find it. So, so you're part of that marketplace that still needs that local technical expert. So, for part of the marketplace that doesn't really need that, the internet's fine. I yeah. mean, if I need to buy, I, I, we buy everything online because I don't really need a salesperson. Oh, I can go to Amazon. Go to Amazon. That salesperson that was there 20 years ago was just there because you had to have someone for the transaction, right? right. Whether it was a shirt, whether it was a pair of shoes, whether it was a bicycle. They filled the order. You filled the order. Today, online takes care of that, and I'm not missing any value. But if I am purchasing a security system, a technical security system for my complex organization, yeah. guess what? I need an expert. So what's happened, unfortunately, is the consumer came out, let's say 2012, 2013, we come out of the recession, but they have learned for the last five years how to be really good at that on, online. Research. So, researching yeah. and everything. So their thought is, we don't need sales professionals. So what my business has been built around is, number one, these security integration companies, for the most part, don't have time to build a sales strategy that works. And number two, the world of buying has changed dramatically in the last, you know, 10 years, let's say. Yeah. And we're still selling, well, let me back up. Yep. The world of buying business to business has changed dramatically. We're still selling like we were selling in 1995. So that's, that's where the uh, impetus of this business came. And, and that was seven years ago we started. And, and it's, it's, it's been perfect. pretty, I got to be yeah. pretty successful, I would say, at this point. Good segue time. So, are you ready for segue time? Can you, I tell you, 14 minutes, we just cranked through this thing in no time. I got to go to Angus. He has a new tech gadget nice. he found. Good. In the security business. Right on. Watch out, competition is coming. All right. <laughs> he might we need be the, it. We need might, competition. He to might keep be us the honest. rep. He might be the rep. Anyway, go to the tech side here, end of the security guy. You got a security minute when we come back? I do. Okay, we got the security minute. We got Angus. We got Chris, Peter, Chris Peterson here. Vector firm. Vector firm. Paradigm of selling. Back in a minute. This is Think Tech Hawaii, raising public awareness. I just walked by and I said, what's happening, guys? And they told me they were making music. Day is no ordinary day. The pitch, hallowed ground for players and supporters alike. Excitement builds. Game plans are made with responsibility in mind. Celebrations are underway. Ready for kickoff. MLS clubs and our supporters rise to the challenge. We make responsible decisions while we cheer on our heroes and toast their success. Elevate your match day experience. If you drink, never drive. Hey, aloha. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. This is Hibachi Talk. Andrew, the security guy here. And I just want to remind you of something. There was a big hack of WPA2, which is a protocol we use to secure your wireless equipment. Go update your wireless equipment. Don't wait. This is not one to play with. It's very severe and it's very pervasive. Anything you do that does wireless needs to be updated. If, if there's no patch for it yet, don't use it. It's that simple. Do your patches. Okay. Angus, that was my security minute. What's up, buddy? Angus is here. You. Right on, man. Mr. Miss Peterson, you, it's great to see you. Dude, that's a good Anglo-Saxon last name, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrific. Anyways, uh, I get a, uh, you were talking about security systems and everything. 
I found this great new uh, device on uh, startup. It's not available yet, but I already ordered one. Yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a camera. Okay. So get ready for the competition there, lad. I know. No, it's, yeah, it's, there it is. Coming at us from all angles. It's called the Moon, the Moon by One Ring. It's Whoa. the world's first le levitating camera. Oh, does it spin 360? It spins 360. I like it. Based on the, on the sound and everything that's in the room. That's it a good idea. 360, tracks all the noise. You can talk to it. You can actually sing it back into the room. Is it like a Kickstarter? It's a like Kickstarter. You can donate to it? You huh? can donate. It donate. It's like $209. That's smart. And you get one. You know what? Huh? And you get one. For what? $209. That's it? That's what. I mean, they already made it. You'll get one someday. I'll get one in about two months. All <laughs> right. I'm going to bring it in here. We'll have it floating around the studio. That'd be epic. That'd be epic. Because we could, we could stream it out. Maybe Around, we could do that, too. People can see what's going on in the studio. Oh, it'd be a whole new series. Right on. Yeah, awesome. I anyway, like it. It's a cool little thing. Nice. It's a 360 day and night vision, sounds, sound direction detection, all kinds of cool things. Nice, fine. So watch for it, man. It might, I don't know. They're going to sell it at Costco, I hope. You never know. You never know. Anyway, that's my gadget for the week. And like I say at the end of every segment, let your win gang free wherever you be. Aloha. Awesome stuff from Angus, digging us up some security gear. You know there's a lot of stuff out there, man. Make sure you find something that works for you. Just make sure it's secure. All right, welcome back. Uh, we're on Think Tech Hawaii. We've got Chris Peterson here from Vector Firm. Gordo's in the house. The techs are. We were talking about the change in the buyer's habits. The paradigm. In the paradigm. That's a good word. They're man. more educated now. How is that? To the point, I think, where they're dangerous. Do you think yeah. they are, or do you think they just read stuff and think they're an expert because they read it? Uh, I think they think they're an expert because they read it. I run into a lot of that. I, I think they get the, the camera, the field of view. They get video a little bit, but access Let's control, a lot of stuff evades, evades buyers. Let me ask Andrew this. Yeah, go for it. When, when you get a spot, when you see a spot on your arm, you got a lump under your kneecap or something, do you call the doctor? No, no I, Mayo I turn Clinic, off the light. I go to Mayo Clinic. Doctor. I turn off the light. Mayo Clinic. I, I do, do too. Do you really? I go to Mayo Clinic. Most people go to WebMD. I go to Mayo Clinic. Or WebMD. I, I do Mayo also. You yeah. self-diagnose your medical? Yeah, yeah. I self-diagnose. Um, Most of I ask Christine have beer. and she self-diagnoses me off WebMD. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. That's right. Mine just says have a beer. Really? And get over Think it. about it. That's a good analogy because something that serious, like a medical thing, people would rather... Do they not trust the, the doctor? No, either? they trust the doctor, but it's much more convenient. So if you're oh, going, it's convenient. If, <laughs> it's convenient and it's quick. So, <laughs> sure. so yeah. if, if you're going to use, and, and meaning you as, th think about it, if, if you're in the sales profession, if, if you're going to use uh, the Internet to diagnose yourself, something that important, yeah. right. aren't your customers, which, by the way, is for generations and generations, centuries, it, the, the, the highest, most profound profession is a physician, right? Right. Yeah. So physician all of a sudden, we're using the internet to within ninety seconds to qualify as a physician. Yeah. To diagnose yeah, ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Watson, right? Right on. Abby Watson Hill. That's it. Uh, Watson Hill. Yeah. That's okay. it. Okay. I'm yeah. involved in that right now, as a matter of fact. Awesome. So. With Ask Watson. With that. With Watson. Watson Hill. Yeah. So I'm repping that product here on the island. That's if, awesome. If, 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 you, if you're going to do that, or if you're, going, if you're a sales professional and, and, and you utilize the internet to become a physician, think about what your customers do for something that's much less significant to them, yeah. Yeah. regardless of what you're selling. Oh, that's true. And, and so, you know, the answer is you've got to become Google. You've got to become better than Google so that they're still going to go online and do their searches. Right. But they need to also email you at the same time because you've become that guy. Uh, who and guy is, you know, multi gender that, 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 that yeah, entity yeah, sure. it, that is going to be the person that, that I call for. Because if you think about it, doing searches is kind of a pain. It's easier than calling a salesperson or four salespeople to come in and explain it. But if I can have a guy that I call and they give me an answer within 90 seconds, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier than searching through Google. Especially right, if they could distill it down, if they're really, if they know their trade, right? right. And, you know, because when you read through, you're going to see a thousands of features and benefits, all this stuff, and like, oh, oh my gosh. And so, you know, you, you'll get a grasp for what's available, but how does that really, you know, distill down to what you need? You, know, you know what right. I mean? And that's what the phone call hopefully does. Well, you, you, know? you would think, but then I'm going to throw, throw another one at you. You know, we've had, we had uh, Covey on talking about the value of trust, right? Yeah, and so on, so true. But a lot of people don't trust the salesperson. I know why All they, they just They just come in, they just, you know, the concept of the used car salesman. Yeah. It's a concept, they're going to come in, they're just going to sell me a bunch of stuff, and I'm never going to see them again. Wow. And I, and I, still, yeah, I still see that today. It's still, oh, it's still, it's still pervasive around here. It, so, it, I, yeah, and I, I mean, I... When I started in the industry here in Hawaii, there was this a, a bit of that, and I was so surprised because to me, it's a very high integrity type of industry. It's mm -hmm. a security, and I 
coming out of military and law enforcement, I had a, a, a perspective on it that was, you know, fairly revered in my own mind. You know what I mean? And so to find that that was like, I this just another camera system. I'll just another yeah, camera just, salesman. And you right. see it. You're just another alarm salesman. I'm like. N no, I'm, I'm here to help no, you we protect have a, your you know, people. There's an integrated was, solution set now. There's technology sure. behind it all. There's all the kinds of things that go with it. And, and, let's, and there's also a difference between the residential side and the commercial yeah, side. When you get, so there's those, you know, because the commercial side costs you a lot more sure. uh, for the most part. Um, but the residential sides are not that secure. I mean, you put it in, you tend to oh, yeah. create a bigger problem by putting in an off-the-shelf product Yeah, it's not configured correctly in your house. I love to talk about that industry. I mean, just the the... the you know, we didn't have 15 years ago, even 10 years ago, software-defined radio available to you for some hundreds of dollars. You know, so they can get that software for free, run on a laptop, figure out that frequency, and jam it. It's that simple. And, and this was super, super expensive, probably a five figures to buy the equipment to do that with mm -hmm. just 10 years ago. So, you know, to be able to sit outside your house and jam your alarm system, people just don't know how easy that is to do. Now, you got to have some technical chops to set up the software to do it, but it's readily available and but it costs nothing it costs nothing well, i can go online and i can get a car access card made well of course i mean i can go get an yeah, you know, i can, go, I, 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 I can just go cents. look into look at some organization and say oh it's an X, xyz reader oh they're probably using this i'll order our old order a card online and yep. chances are it'll work on that reader so so what what the two of you you are doing right now this dialogue what you don't realize you're doing is you are becoming sales professionals in 2017, 18, in today's day. Because in order to become a successful sales professional today, you've got to become the perceived expert. Right. And when, when folks, and, and how often do you hear this, Andrew, in our space? We're solutions providers. If you want to be a strong salesperson, you've got to be a solutions provider. And I'm not disagreeing with that. But if you're a solutions provider, you're a commodity, if that's all you are. Mm. Because I can go to Google and get solutions. Any question you have, mm -hmm. I can go to Google and get the answer. But Google this. Google, find my specific problem. See what Google comes up with. Right. There is no answer to find my specific problem. What the, <laughs> what the, uh, so what's your problem? So if I'm a sales <laughs> that's, professional, that's a good point. if I'm a sales professional that understands my market well enough to understand what that university, what that hotel, what, what, what that uh, prison or, or DOD base, what their problems are going to be, mm -hmm. and I can present it to them like the two of you just did in this dialogue. You were talking, you were presenting problems about residential security that your viewers had no idea were out there. So what you're doing Maybe. is you're presenting problems, and they are probably thinking, I need to get these guys in here because that's a problem I didn't think about, but it's a pervasive, it's a, it's a real problem. I need a solution. Now, what we do today is we, we're solutions providers, so we wait for them to come to us, provide the best solution. Guess mm -hmm. what? They don't ask us for solutions anymore. They find their solution here, then they ask us for a price. price. <laughs> yes. And, and that's, that's, not, that's not that's, good. I mean, that's, at least they're asking for something, yeah. but that's still not the but way we want to be engaged. That is, no, that's right. We want to be right. engaged but that's for our also knowledge. But that's also the wrong, wrong approach. I yeah. mean, yeah. they say, what's the number? I mean, I have clients and I, you know, that's, that the beauty of my niche is very similar to yours is that I'm agnostic, but I come in and I will look at, they'll say, this is what we got. Yeah. I'll help to find the problem. They'll agree that that's the problem. Then we'll identify solutions. Yep. Then they'll identify the solutions they liked. And then we'll go worry about the price. Yes. You know, and then there'll be more than one. There'll be two or three that they can look at and say, okay, I'm willing to pay this price for this or not that price for that. Yes. So, and I'm seeing that happening now, but I'm still aghast that 80%, I think, of the businesses in this town are still using Google and not commercial grade, residential grade product to secure their enterprises. Yeah. It's it's beyond fathoming. And these are these are big enterprises. Yeah, that's an issue. And I mean, so soon I think their their insurance company when we have some UL, some of the guidance that we're working on in the industry, when we start to get product like that in the market, I think their insurance companies will change some of this, you know, they, they won't they won't be covered if they're caught. You know, uh, like if you have a fire and you had no fire extinguishers or sprinklers, probably guess what? Your insurance yeah, well, not going to pay. Yeah, well, then you're there. But you lied and said you did. So far back to the for this from the sales perspective. So how do you how do you how do you break through the executive rank to get them to understand that really they shouldn't just be relying on a security guard or some friend of a friend to provide their security system. Or whoever their brought all their Google industry. pages to them. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, how do, you, how, do you break that, how do you break into that? Well, the, the difference in today and, and, let's say, before 2006, 
is before you could break into it. You, by persistence, by creativity, you could, you could push in. You can't push in anymore. No. You've got to be pulled in. And yes. in order to be pulled in, you've got to present yourself as, a, as an expert in the place, in the, in the marketplace. And there are many ways to do that. Uh, the the old-fashioned prospecting is still relevant. You still need to do that. But right. you've got to combine it with, with traditional networking. You've got to, the social selling uh, that you've got to do today. To here, here I can pump Chris's uh, academy. So you sign up for Chris's <laughs> academy, he'll teach you how to do all this. So that's so, 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 all right. So in I had to take the opportunity to do that. In your vector firm, you've got, we can sign up. He's got an we online can, academy. We've got an online academy, yep. and we can start getting in, yeah. introduced to the programs and the products. That's so what's right. the website that we can go to to get uh, this? Vectorfirmacademy.com okay. is for the academy. For the academy. Vectorfirmacademy.com. Vectorfirm.com is my company. Is your company. But the yeah. academy is Vectorfirmacademy.com. Yeah, I just had to plug that there. No, it was, no, a, it was uh, a natural uh, thing. I'm, I'm he glad, wasn't even I'm doing glad it. you did because believe it or not, we're running out of time again. It happens. <laughs> it happens all 28 the, minutes and 30 seconds 28 minutes is all and 30 get. seconds. So anyway, Chris, this is um, number 138 in the series of um, Solo Cup, so I'd like you to highly secure that. <laughs> so this is mine. That's yours. That's it's mine. all Fantastic. yours. you got 138 in the series. All right. And they're popping up all over the world, I can tell you. Yeah, on sure. eBay? On eBay. <laughs> so anyway, Chris, I want to thank you because it gave me a whole new perspective on, on how to look at how we're doing the sales, but the keys yeah. were like relationships, perseverance, expertise. Right. Right. On, now I add honesty and integrity. Yes, and, always. And my handshake is my word. Yes, and that's, always. And that'll be the pieces that I'll, I will add to it. Anyway, thanks a lot for joining us on the show. Sure, this is Hibachi Talk, Think Tech Hawaii, every Wednesday at 1300 hours. Yes, Hawaii. And then live time. on YouTube. You can check us out there. And also check out hibachi.com. Check us out on Twitter. Check us out on Facebook. Anything like that. We look forward to any ideas and anything you want us to bring us on the show. And as we always say at the end of every, every show, one, two, three. How are you doing? doing?